nous avons fait avec, euh, j'ai fait avec ma, euh, ma fille qui est euh, psychothérapeute, euh, une euh, study on, <laughs> on Charles Bukowski's Aigne. In our study, we try to understand the impact Charles Bukowski's severe acne had on his life and work, taking into account his family and his social life. The scars the acne left are documented in numerous photos, as well as in some of the author's self-portraits. This extreme acne, his violent father and his submissive mother, profoundly influenced both his life and writing. <clears throat> Irrespective of his addiction to alcohol and sex, of psychosocial stressors as well as of life crises, he wrote obsessively, especially short stories and poetry. Shortly before his 74th birthday, Bukowski died of leukemia in an hospital intensive care unit, contrary to his wish to die left alone, like the Indian in one of his poems. From a dermatological and psychological point of view, Bukowski's autobiography, Ham on Rye, is of particular interest, wherein he describes the first 16 years of his life. This book, which he later would call his best work, contains a detailed description of his physical suffering from the acne, as well as the mental suffering at the hands of his brutal father, as well as a lack of empathy by his mother and fellow human beings. Thus, it is not by chance that this book carries a dedication for all fathers. In his introduction to the German edition, Karl Weisner wrote, I cite, at the age of 14, he developed wild acne and boils all over his body. Better child syndrome gave vent. Teenagers run over by fate in this way, later become beating family fathers, sociopath in the city administration, misogynistic borderliners, burbles with a compulsion to wash. This one became a letter sorter and a poet. The acne Bukowski developed at the age of 13 was by no means... The next one. Ah. The acne Bukowski developed at the age of 13 was by no means like the acne, the kind of simple pimples his peers had, but an extreme form with pus bumps on the face and back, some of them as large as walnuts. In the medical language, this type of acne is designated as cystic acne or acne conglobata, leaving severe, disfiguring scars upon healing. For the pathogenesis of acne, a genetic disposition, together with disorders of the sexual hormone testosterone, as well as changes in lipid metabolisms, are responsible. The increased production of testosterone, mediated somewhat by stress, not only affects the sebaceous glands with the formation of acne, but also the psychological status. Studies show that antisocial, aggressive or criminal behavior often is associated with increased testosterone levels in men, self-understanding. Bukowski indirectly confirms that testosterone is produced mainly in the testicles when he noticed at a shower with classmates, I had the biggest balls of all. <laughs> in some patients, acne is aggravated by milk. Since Bukowski senior delivered milk, one could speculate on the role of milk for Bukowski's acne. However, this seems unlikely since his father clearly preferred home cooking and the family members had to eat everything that was on the table. As Bukowski Jr. early in his life started with cigarette smoking and alcohol, one could speculate that these factors also might have contributed. In the 1930s, at the time Bukowski developed his acne, treatment consisted of peeling pastes, ultraviolet light radiation, and of opening the abscesses with a so-called hot needle, that is a needle heated by electric current. Due to the large number of abscesses which had to be opened, the therapy was carried out without local anesthesia, an extremely painful procedure. Bukowski describes in detail his extreme suffering, 
for several weeks as newly appearing abscesses had to be opened. An important aspect of his suffering was his experience with doctors and nurses. Among the medical staff, only but one nurse showed empathy. Without exception, the doctors were distant and pitiless, only interested in commenting on this extreme case of acne and demonstrating it to other doctors. Bukowski felt humiliated. He wondered how some people had managed to become doctors. His statement, the doctors were kings, the patients fresh, and being a doctor is a hard profession, but the cash register is right, witnesses his experience with doctors, akin to those of the Austrian writer Thomas Bernhard, who also suffered from severe acne as a teenager. When Bukowski occasionally squeezed an abscess in front of the mirror, he not only felt disgust, but also a fascination in a horrible way. Pus, perceived as a malodorous, disgusting substance by almost all people, evoked a kind of pleasure in Bukowski. This sensation, described as disgusting lust, ekel lust, is a reminiscence of the polymorphic perverse form of sexuality of early childhood and the accompanying joy to all bodily secretions. This feeling is a prominent feature in Charlotte Roche's bestseller, Wetlands. Her protagonist, Helen, describes in detail the pleasure of dealing with secretions and decay products of her own as well as of body strangers. This disgusting lust might also be a component of itching in skin diseases such as psoriasis. The American writer John Updike, who lived from 1932 to 2008, who suffered almost all of his life from itchy psoriasis, felt this kind of lust and a kind of furtive pleasure too when scratching his skin lesions. Bukowski also describes a tingling sensation when his girlfriend Linda squeezed out his pimples in the glow of the bedside lamp, giving him an erection now and then. For Bukowski pathography, besides the acne, his violent and sadistic father is decisive. Once, Bukowski Sr. took the acne of his son as an opportunity to torment him by forcing him to leave an aggressive, painful peeling pace on his skin for hours instead of only 30 minutes. Predictably, Bukowski Jr. did not develop an emotional relationship with his father, whom he characterizes as a brain-cracking, stupid monster. From the other family members, his paternal grandmother deserves mention. She, as a Polish Catholic, considered the agony of her grandson to be the devil in disguise. Bukowski describes in detail and highly amusing the scene of exorcism, however fugitive. Clearly, one of the highlights in his book, in his uh, biographical book. As far as is known, Bukowski did not turn to psychologists or psychiatrists. His disdain of doctors let him believe that you are on the losing end of you pay people like psychiatrists money to hear from them what to do. In his opinion, psychiatrists were only paid for their lies to guarantee the continued existence of social disorder. The torments young Bukowski had to endure evoked fantasies of patricide. <coughs> However, he did not kill his father, but he put his plan to defend himself into action. After a nighttime drinking spree, the final break with his parents occurred. Bukowski writes, in one fell swoop, at the age of six and a half, I knocked out my father, a violent sweating bustle with bad breath. It is common sense that acne stigmatizes and leads to social exclusion. In Bukowski's case, the social isolation occurred well before his acne developed when his father radically restricted social contacts with neighboring children. In addition of the deprivation ex ex imposed externally, Bukowski himself noted withdrawal tendencies long before the onset of acne, when reported that he lost his enthusiasm for the masses at the age of four. From a psychoanalytic point of view, this temporal assignment fits into the anal, active forming, exploratory and also aggressively tinged phase of the development of sexual autonomy, peculiar to this age group. So it is not surprising 
that Bukowski Jr. anxiously avoided to go to the toilet in the kindergarten. Ironically, he later wrote that he had the feeling that there was something inside of him, even if it was only hardened shit. It was more than his peers had in them. After his acne had healed, After his acne had healed, his face was marked by disfiguring scars, which made him feel like suffering from leprosy. He himself, as well as his love affairs, compared his appearance with animals like monkeys, alligators, dogs, and hyenas. A person stigmatized by scars is, at least initially, unable to distance himself from the floor. The disfigured skin impedes the so much desired intimacy and closeness. This contact blockade decreased with age, last but not least when Bukowski learned that his appearance did not stand in the way of his success with women. Amused, he notes the envy of a colleague who did not believe that he could attract so many women in 24 hours. This success with women reconciled him somewhat with his appearance. In a self-ironic manner he wrote, in spite of everything, I liked myself with my two small hands and the scarred monkey face. He justifies his interest in women with the emotional deficits of his childhood. No love, no nest warmth. I have a lot of catching up to do. People with a scarred face are often considered ugly or repulsive. However, equating scars with ugliness and smooth skin with beauty is superficial, since ugliness is not defined as the absence of beauty. Here, the flat but apt statement comes in mind that beauty mainly is created in the eye of the beholder. Deformities of the face, especially congenital malformations and pronounced scars after plastic surgery do have a negative effect on attractiveness. However, this does not apply to male acne scars, which in contrary tend to increase attractiveness, at least for those women who are more interested in a short-term relationship than a long-term one. When Bukowski points out that other men did not whistle at his girlfriend or did not make ambiguous gestures, he alludes to the idea that a scar face is considered a sign of particular masculinity. Bukowski turned his stigma and his unhappy childhood, which according to Hemingway is the best school for a writer, into creativity. The concept of epigenetic modeling in recent neuroscientific research shows that a chaotic childhood can indeed be a source of particular creativity. As a self-determined, unattached loner, Bukowski is a true philopath. That is a person who overcomes his inner tensions, his emotional fluctuations and strokes of fate, as well as the horror of hopelessness by a particular activity. In Bukowski's case, this creativity consisted in writing, his vital tool to overcome his inner conflicts and to control the demons from the past. In his own words, poetry is survival. Bukowski's literary productivity seems paradoxical in view of his lifestyle. Ironically, his extreme discipline is based on his father, the figure crucial for the formation of his superego. Bukowski real realized this at an older age when he wrote, without knowing what he was doing, my father shaped what creative power I have within me. His creative power with writing, expressed for him in the magic of words, surpasses everything else in importance. No woman so beautiful, no wealth greater. Finally, he could also address his physical similarity to his father in a poem entitled Twins. Like many writers, Bukowski tried to make his sense of his illness when he wrote, Men sometimes get sick just to get out of the wheels of everyday life for a while. However, his acne and his other illnesses did not have the same significance for writing as for other writers with life-threatening diseases. Bukowski's work reflects especially the interactions of genetic, psychological and social factors. The power of observation and the pitiless, almost cutting uh, Cutting irony with which he described the American way of life of his time is striking. 
Unlike Chuck Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, Bob Burroughs and others, Bukowski did not belong to the writers of the Beat Generation, describing attitudes of hippie life. Bukowski's work deals with human beings on the fringes of society, the horse, the alcoholics, and the disadvantaged by life. For us, his works remind us of George Orwell's Down and Out in Paris and London, who, some decades before, had erected a monument to the same human beings. In the mirror Bukowski holds, his competitors holds up to his competitors are unable to recognize their true selves and the society in which they live. This is one of the reasons why he was not only rejected by the vast majority of his contemporaries, but also reviled as a true, dirty old man. Bukowski never allowed himself to be co-opted, neither for a cause, nor for a party, nor for a movement. Throughout his life, like his alter ego, Henry Chinaski, a poet and chronicle living in the urban jungle of LA, obsessed with writing, sex, alcohol, cigarettes, and horse betting. To sum up, the physical and psychological experiences Bukowski made over many years suffering from severe acne and the remaining scars strongly influence his attitude towards other diseases, medical profession, hospitals, life and death. Thank you.